welcome to the Classy Ring Attire Podcast. I'm Joel. I'm Chris. It's time to get classy. Yeah, we're back. All right. We're back. We're back. And I would say better. Uh, well, yeah, like... With, with, yeah. We got a, we got a real microphone. A new microphone. Yeah, I tested it out on a, a YouTube video that I, that I did, uh, the slideshow. The famous slideshow that and everyone wanted. The first wanted. plug of the night goes the to. The first plug. <laughs> Dude, we're going to get that YouTube money. Yeah. 80 some views. I'm telling you. Our previous high was 16. Wait, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to change the the, the theme song to "Money, Money, Money." <laughs> or here comes the money. Here comes the money. Yeah. So, but. Yeah. Although I think I might have messed up. Yeah. I noticed. I noted in the video that he's like, "Okay, it's important to note that Joel played here comes the money." I think here comes the money is Stephanie's theme. Is it? Here comes the money, and then I like, yeah. I think <laughs> Shane's is just the money, money. money. Or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. It, it could have been the same one. I don't remember. It's what I get for not watching Weekly back then. <sighs> it's what I, I get for not remembering. Like, a lot of my stuff is, is hearsay and kind of remembers. Well, I mean, well, apparently Stephanie has a new theme song, too. So that, Stephanie's back. Stephanie is back, like, in a big, bad way. Like, yeah. she's yelling at the boys tonight. Yeah, she is. She is, like, character development. She's not just there for, like, a one-off thing, apparently. No, she was... This is her second week in a row. Yeah. And, you know, I'm assuming this Triple H storyline, like, they're putting serious time in it. Uh, yeah. So. They, well, I hope it, Hopefully it's not for nothing, but... Well, yeah. I would... I would I I'm would, assuming they're, they're going to do some sort of power struggle. Yeah, let's just say I will take not for nothing over Final Redemption over Brock Lesnar. Yes. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. A thousand times. So, <laughs> so not for nothing. It's it's technically the second worst thing that this could be. Okay, all right. So, um, but yeah, no, I, I would I would appreciate a on screen storyline Triple H takeover of the company. Okay. Um, but he would be a good guy in this situation right now. For right now, I'm, I'm okay with him being a good guy for right now. Okay. I, I do think, as I've said many times, I think the boss should be a heel, and so I do think that there should be an eventual heel turn if Triple H continues to play an on-screen board member. Yeah. Role. That being said, I know you were you were late to Raw this week. Uh, mm. You you didn't really get to catch that opening segment, did you? No, but I've been told it's worth going back and watching. It is. It absolutely is. Like. Vince, okay, they they start the match between Curtis Axel and Triple H. They barely get going. All of a sudden, you hear no chance. Vince comes strutting out. He goes over and says, uh, and he tells Justin Roberts to say that as a result of a disqualification, winner is Curtis Axel. And Vince, his music plays again, walks out, you know, goes back into Gorilla. Triple H goes over to threaten Justin Roberts and be like, Restart the match now. And he announced the match has been restarted. And he goes out. They start fighting again. And no chance. I don't think he's. Yeah. No chance plays again I believe. He walks all the way down. Does the same thing. And says uh, as subject to. Uh, uh, forfeit. Forfeit. Yeah. I know so, that because it was a replay. Yeah. <laughs> and then Triple H tells him that no. It's an Iron Man match now. He does that. And then Vince comes back down. He, he he tells Curtis Axel to get. <laughs> uh, that's a go that's on a, get. That's a Southern thing for those who don't understand why that's funny. Representing his alma mater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. University, yeah. Vince McMahon. Um, and uh, he he steals Justin Roberts' mic and the timekeeper's ring bell. <laughs> Almost whacks Justin Roberts in the face with it. Yeah, I saw that. And struts on out with it again. I, it was. Can I? Express? It sounds like a horrible idea when I explain it to you just now, and I think I really shouldn't have explained it to you at all. <laughs> but it was so funny to watch. Can I express how much it like warms the cockles of my heart that Vince McMahon is a heel again? Yeah, and yeah, he, he, yeah, and he does it pretty effortlessly. Like mm-hmm. it comes out, everyone cheers, and then when seconds, within seconds, he has everyone booing him. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. No, he's so good at it. And we talked about it uh, while we were watching Raw. I was like, and his hair's looking good. I know his hair has a little bit of more poof to it, but like, like, like a little bit like the '90s. Yeah, yeah like I, it, it, all, it feels like it feels like 
like but we're not hated. saying that his hair hair was great back then because it's a bad haircut. It's a bad haircut, but it's not Vince. But it's a majestic mane of a bad haircut. I I get I it just and it feels ever like since the hair versus hair match, it's been a lot right. More like sad it just come over. Uh, it's just not the same. It's not Vince without that yeah. hair. That's what we mean by it's better. Yeah. You know, it's not a good haircut for anyone. It's the correct haircut for Vince. Yes, absolutely. And like, I am the powerful guy in charge haircut. It feels a little bit like the Mr. McMahon character, like the heyday Mr. McMahon character. A little it's bit. seeping back. And except, like now, except now, the, McMahon, the Mr. McMahon character has ridiculous suits. Yeah. They're just, just all these shades of blues and purples. It's crazy. I'm excited. I, I I really hope this story takes off. I really do, honestly. <laughs> like, yeah, this... I'm right there with you. So, but um, yeah. yeah. So um, moving right along. Payback is payback is, is, here. is time. And before Raw, we only had three matches. Yeah. And then they just chucked out a bunch of them in one night in the Go Home Show, which felt a little odd. Like they didn't announce any of these beforehand. No, I mean they just had. I mean, this is coming off two pay per views that had way too many matches. Yeah, so I don't know. On top of them wanting to do the whole pre show and then intermission kind of thing with the same pre show crew. Yeah, like it seems like they're wanting to kind of have that format, which is fine. They want they want to be honest with you. Show who they the guys they used last week uh, uh, had Renee Young hosting and then had uh, Wade Titus. Oh, on the on the pay rates yeah. rules. That and there was one I think there was one other person I can't I'm not remembering. Um that actually paid off really with Mick Foley. Mick Foley, that's Mick right. Foley, yeah. How dare I forget that? Um that setup with those those people worked really well. The WrestleMania one felt awkward. Mm-hmm. The WrestleMania, okay, the WrestleMania one felt like, oh, these guys aren't on the card. Well that, that was the case with this one though. That's the case with this one, but and, and maybe it was because it was the first time with WrestleMania, right. but like this, this is a good opportunity. For I think people. it felt more like that because Kofi was on the WrestleMania one. I think that's that, the big. Kicker. That might have been it. It kind of felt like that with Wade Barrett, but Titus O'Neil, we kind of figured wouldn't be on the card. And Mick right. Foley, come on, Mick, it's, Mick Foley. I'm saying if they're going to do this every month, this is a good way to have the you know roundtable feel kind of thing they're going for. But yeah. at the same time, to work on to let these guys get their characters out in a way that's not, you know, so much of the I'm a heel because right now I hate this particular face. Right. This kind of thing. Um, you know. Well, yeah. Even, like, they had Wade Barrett on last week and he technically was still in a thing against Miz, I believe. Unless he was still off to shoot the movie. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Either way, he really just didn't have any kind of notion that I hate so-and-so kind of thing. Right. Same thing with Titus. They were both very well. But... And, Renee Young, dear lord, she's hitting her stride right now. Yeah, I, I'm loving, I'm loving what she's doing. So, um, I, th- I think if they continue this, this is a good opportunity, you know, to have like, just you know, you want this guy to kind of get over as a heel, have him just endorse cheating in general or whatever, have mm-hmm. the face that you're trying to get over endorse good sportsmanship, you know, say and say good things about the other faces, but he doesn't have to do this, you know, much more blatant, you know the pops and the, you know, the cheap pops either face or heel or any kind of like and I hate this person that I'm in a feud with right now for this belt, blah blah blah. Fair enough. So, um, should we just go through the, the card? Let's now? go through the card. Uh, first off we have the kickoff match. They specifically called it the kickoff match, not the pre-show anymore. Yeah. I'm assuming they don't want to mix up the whole pre-show with people talking. Maybe that overall is the pre-show. I don't know. Right. I'd Far be it for me to try to decipher what WWE decides to do, you know. Uh, but that match is Sheamus versus Damian Sandow. Why are they fighting? I really didn't know they had even had a feud until I actually watched SmackDown this past week. I had a sudden realization, maybe three days ago or so. Okay. I was thinking about it, and it just, it's like the streaming of an epiphany. I truly hate Sheamus. Yeah, me too. I truly and okay. deeply and 100% We tried. We tried I so hard cannot, not to hate him, but I it, cannot stand Sheamus. And all of you out there that complain about John Cena, every complaint you ever had about John Cena is tenfold Sheamus right now. 
Oh, yeah. Seamus is unbearable in every aspect. Like, he's annoying in the ring. He, okay. He's frustrating he's, on Mike. He's the one kid on the playground that you don't want anything to do with. Like, he's just the... the the pop the the quote unquote popular kid who is technically a bully, but no one wants to say anything because they don't want to be you know oh I want to be a cool kid too, but everyone secretly hates him. Well, that's also the thing is like that Seamus is and yes, I am saying Seamus is com- his character is completely infantile. That's what I that's the main absolutely story. It, worse than anybody else in, on the card, Seamus is the face that just does heel stuff. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He's you know cheap shot and. He had, basically he has been bullying Damian Sandow this yes. entire Damian Sandow is like feud. Damian Sandow is essentially in this storyline. He's the nerdy kid who wants to show you all of his nerdy things. Yes, he's being kind of a, a jerk about it. Yeah, Fine. no, he's the heel, and he's doing a great job right. being a heel and stuff. And James is like, ha, ha, "You're smart. Let me crush your stuff." Like the whole supercomputer thing with the chest thing. He's like, "I'm going to show you how to beat this thing in one move," and kicks it. Who I, likes that? I guy? can't. It it is difficult. For me to put into words how much I truly hate Seamus. More than anything else in wrestling right now, Seamus needs to go away. Yes. The end. The period. I have given up. I he do didn't, not... He did not work as a heel. Nope. He he is not working as a face. He's worse as a all. face. And here's the thing, like, and, you know, if you've followed through the, you know, through the years of us doing this, I've gone back and forth on Seamus. And like Seamus has done things, and I'm like, yeah, I, I can. was no, I was I was I was okay with him when he won. You know, I was okay with him when he won Royal Rumble, and yeah. then for some reason after that, it's like he flipped the switch, and I just did everything terrible. Like he won the he won the the World Heavyweight Championship in that 18 second match thing, and I was okay with that. It was fine, but when he, it's like at that moment we got. A very close up view of his character because he was put on the pedestal of being the champion and obviously the guy that WWE was wanting to push. And that just showed me everything I needed to see at that point. So from then on, hated him. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I'm very glad that you're, you're long here with me. I, I, more than anything else, like, and, and ever since I thought about it, I was like, I just, no, I would rather watch, I would rather watch anything else than a Seamus match right now. Literally anything else. And it, I would everything, ra- everything he does no, just no, bothers no, no, me. No. Like the fact that he just he pounds his chest and he yells, "Fella, mm, who's the fella mm, he's mm. he's yelling at?" I I just can I I would ra- I would rather Kali come out than Seamus. Wow, I'm not even kidding. I would rather Kali come out. I would rather Kali and Hornswoggle have a dance contest than a Seamus match right now. For a second, I wanted to be like, "How dare you!" But. I, now that I think about it, I would be okay with it. It like, wouldn't be ideal, but if I was given the choice, that... I mean, I, if a third I choice like, was a gunshot you know, to the head, I probably would take that. Here, I mean, here's the thing. Still. Uh, objectively, yes, technically, a wrestling match would be a better thing to see on a wrestling show than a dance contest between these two guys. I don't know. Part <laughs> of it is my personal current hatred for Sheamus. I, I hate Sheamus, and I hate everyone who likes him. Yeah. I call them... Because, you know, he yells fella all the time. I call them the fillators. The fillators. <laughs> That's a dumb... No. no. No? No, I'm editing that out of this podcast. The fillators? The fillators. Is, is, it, too, is it too rated M for you? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> the fillators. Boo. I boo oh, that. Oh, come on. I boo that. I solidly boo that. Oh, come on. So, you know what? No, here's the thing. From now on, I'm fully predicting and endorsing anybody versus Seamus. I'm predicting that win. So that's just why I'm predicting Damien Sandow to win. Because I cannot... Handle the concept that Seamus might win that match. So no, Damian okay. Sandow will win. Yeah, I'm not like no slight to Sandow, but I'm not giving it any maths no. just because of Seamus. Yeah, fair enough. All right, all right. So let's go with the triple threat match for the Intercontinental Championship. Got Wade Barrett, the champion, versus Miz and recent uh, person that they entered into this match, Curtis Axel. Um, they took. They were supposed to be Fandango. Uh, Fandango got a concussion in a match against Zack Ryder on SmackDown this past week, so they took him out, put it, put Curtis Axel in, which I'm assuming, I mean, they were going to find a way to put Axel in this pay-per-view anyway. Yeah. I don't know what, because they, apparently they're wanting to keep him in Triple H on Raw. Unless they were going to lead to them doing a pay-per-view match, I don't know. 
Well, we'll get to that later. I had I had a, I had a thought, but for now, I have a feel like I I I really had a feeling that this was all a setup for Fandango to win the champion, the Intercontinental Championship. Yeah. Uh, now with Curtis Axel in, I'm not exactly sure. Like, I don't know if they just completely <laughs> threw their plans for Fandango out the window now. This, or what? this is the thing is like, if this were any other company in the world doing any other storytelling medium, I would say that this means that Curtis Axel is a has a guaranteed loss because Did you call him Curtis Askel. I, maybe. Okay. <laughs> Curtis Axel, sorry, had a guaranteed loss because, you know, there's no way, because he was clearly not in the original plan, so they right. were... Right. But because it's but WWE... You never know. It's totally and believable. And he's the guy that they're kind of wanting to push. Yeah. And, and why not push him by putting a belt on him? Yeah. Um... I don't know. I, like, I, I just, I am... I, I wish coins had three sides. Yeah, because I, I it personally could still go um, anyway. There's going to be some sort of DQ that says Axel wins, but but, but, no, but no, yeah, that doesn't make that, sense because it's triple like, no. Yeah. Um. Uh, why not? They're going to put it on Axel. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Then I I don't know what they're going to do with Fandango when he comes back, but still. I don't know. Honestly, when when like I saw it written down. Um, I forgot for a second that The Miz was a face now. I'm like, yeah. why are they putting three heels against each other yeah. in a title shot? Um, so... Because we don't care about The Miz anymore. He hasn't given us a reason to care. I miss liking way. The Miz. I know. I, I know enjoyed liking The Miz. I know you did. I really did. You were like one step below Michael Cole. Yeah. On no. Liking, on no, the Miz. I, was, I was on board for The Miz. Yeah. So... I mean, I mean... God, I You like Miz... But you wouldn't jump up and down and start crying whenever he won the championship, like Michael Cole did. But you're like one step below that. Felt good, but that's it. Yeah. I I wanted the Miz to be good. Like that's the I thing. know. Like, oh I was, yeah. I saw, we, uh, yeah. We've talked about it before. So I don't need to like go into it again. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was rooting for the guy. I really. Especially when he was up against good. Cena. It's it's easy to root for a guy whenever he's up against Cena. Yeah. All right, Curtis Axel. Um. Uh. Okay. Next up, we have the Divas Championship. I'm assuming this has happened. I don't remember them actually announcing it, but it's online, so it must be true. Uh, Does one of them have the title? Yeah, Caitlyn is the champion. Is Caitlyn champion? Yeah, Caitlyn's champion. All right, I think so. so. Yeah, it's Caitlyn versus AJ. A match that they've been kind of teasing us with since before WrestleMania. Since the week before WrestleMania, that's when AJ won the, the number one contendership. Yeah. Uh, it kind of it came to a head this past Monday night when they revealed the secret admirer was Biggie Langston, but not really. It was an all ploy, which we all kind of knew was going to happen. I I think they totally dropped the ball, and they could have had it actually be Biggie Langston, and it could have been, been amazing. Oh yeah, because they they joked about this on Twitter for the longest time. Yeah, and it was amazing. The thing is, they wanted Biggie to go out and kind of deliver the lines, and he he did. I felt like if you let him ad lib, it would have been a much better thing, because we know what he can do. Yeah, we know how creative this guy is. But I don't know. I I I really. But think... what was funny was whenever he did the uh, the dip mm-hmm. and paused. He was so obviously laughing or trying hard not to. I think she was kind of too. Yeah. And then he dropped her. Yeah. I I think you give Biggie Langston. A his heart versus his loyalty internal struggle storyline. That would have been so good. I, I, I think it would be worth like, it would be worthy of trying to get WWE eligible for Emmys. It would have been amazing. That would have done it. Ah, that would have done it. And and we're back to this cop out storyline. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a little bitter. I, I yeah, I can tell. I can tell. A little bitter. Where where are you where are you? yeah yeah you're bitter. Yeah yeah I can see it all over your this, face. Just ah. this but, whole I mean, okay, this whole a, card so far is just me being bitter about. I things. understand, but at least we have an actual diva storyline. We yeah. have not had that in a while. Fair enough. So there's you know your your glass half full. Of course, AJ's in it. Of course, AJ's in it, and Caitlyn. She's like the other girl that we actually give a crap about. Yeah. If she would just change her hair. I like her hair. I think you might be the only guy <laughs> that's into that. I mean, I'm fine. I mean, with I'm her into hair. I'm into everything else about her. I don't. The you hair know, is just nah. I'm not gonna make a sign for Caitlyn's hair. I should totally make a sign for Caitlyn's hair. 
<laughs> and it I, should, and I like how you said something and instantly <laughs> took it back once it left your mouth. Because the sign could have a wig of Caitlyn's hair on it. Smackdown is, is in Greensboro. Oh! Smackdown's in. Oh, I might need to go buy a ticket right now. <laughs> ticket started 15 bucks. I know. I've seen that commercial a thousand times. That's, why, that's how I know it. Oh, man. I mean, I... I her, she gets, you know, ripped on for her hair long. I don't care. Her hair's fine to me. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. It, it's, not, it's not enough to make me just hate, straight up hate the girl. It's just not my thing. But everything else about her, I, I really dig. Uh, so, we have the the tag team championship match. Versus, you know, it's uh, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins mm-hmm. versus... Wait, did we just skip the <laughs> we were predicting for this match? For the Oh, I'm sorry. Match? I'm sorry. AJ's gonna win. Oh, I'll go Caitlyn. Okay. I, I, um... I think this genuinely has the ability to last for more than one pay per view. It's a rare, oh, yeah. rare diva storyline that could do that. Um, I would like Ziggler. What was that word? Ziggler. Ziggler. <laughs> there we go with the appropriate syllables. Ziggler. <laughs> I would it's like... Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> he needs it. He needs it to be Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> Dolph. Dolph. <laughs> Can you like dolphin? Can you just give him like an additional da syllable? Dolph Ziggler. He's da like Alf a character. Ziggler. He's like a character from Game of Thrones now. Dolph. <laughs> Dolph. <Da> yep. <laughs> um, okay, I would like. K- uh, I can't. I'm done. <laughs> I don't even remember the words I'm saying. I would like AJ and Ziggler to have like a we both have belts kind of celebration. And then Biggie's just like oh, I don't. Well, put him for like the. I see. Yeah, you know, the he can be in the triple threat can be a fatal four way. Oh. Kind of thing. Yeah, I'd be okay with that. You know. And not obviously not this month, but Yeah, slowly. Yeah. Yeah. Can we can't all be shield. Right. Okay. Uh speaking of, like I was saying, we had the tag team championship. Uh the Shield, Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins versus Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton. Yeah. Uh, they have already been named RK No. Team RK No. How do you feel? First of all, because we, we, we take these names very seriously. Yes. How do you feel about the team name? The actual team name is going to be Team Hug a Viper. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that has some innuendo undertones. <laughs> that, that is what we're calling them? Right here. I'm giving Joel a high five. We got that on camera. Yep. <laughs> you did not get it on camera. We got that on audio. Shut up. <laughs> So so uh, we have okay. So part of that is because I don't believe this team will last very long, <laughs> but I will totally call them Team Hug a Viper. Team Hug a Viper, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, so we had okay. I watched SmackDown. I've, I, I this is like the third time I've mentioned it on the show because I want everyone to realize how rare of an occurrence this. We're going to talk about how I thought I watched TNA this week. I know, I know, I know, I know, I <laughs> know. So this is just this is Bizarro, class of Um At the end of uh, SmackDown. Randy Orton delivered an RKO to Daniel Bryan after their match. After Daniel Bryan was single-handedly fighting off the shield again. That is a heel turn, yes? The one would think. One would think. Going raw. And, you know, he kind of... He doesn't... Well, he doesn't, like, you know, beg for forgiveness or anything like that. But they kind of patch things up a little bit. And they team up. Uh... During this, or they don't team up, but they're they're essentially teaming up yeah. during Raw. Um, so well, okay, I guess they're fine now. Well, it's your it's your classic. Does a tree fall in the forest? Thing. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I said something to that effect on on Twitter. You know, if, the, if a heel turn happens on SmackDown, could one argue that it actually never happened? And I said that when I watched SmackDown before Raw. Then I watched Raw. And I was like, yep, it was true. You could. Yeah, absolutely. Because they really didn't touch on it at all. Mm-mm. I would figure that would be kind of a big thing that they would they would talk about, but no, they didn't. So we have that aspect, which I'm sure that'll play that'll play into it somehow anyway. Yeah. Either Kane will, you know, I don't think Kane would get involved. I I think this is. But I think Randy Orton would turn on Brand. I, I, I think we are very close to the and probably at at the end of Team Friendship at this point. And I'm okay with that because we're seeing all this. Daniel Bryan momentum mm-hmm. and shift towards uh, singles, yeah, which I'm completely okay with. I'm, I'm pretty sure most of our listeners would agree. And Kane's probably going to be fine because Kane is always fine. Oh yeah, Kane's fine. <laughs> Granted, yes, 
this has probably been one of the most fun runs of Kane's career. Like yeah. he's had a great career, and it, you know it, he's had a lot of big, great moments. But this one of those things where it was so much fun to watch him mm-hmm. over the past almost. It's been almost a year since this whole thing started. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It started. It started. They had a ma- they had a match against each other at SummerSlam, and it was just kind of a thing after that. Right. So, and it, it's it it's sad in, in, to see it end, but we knew it was coming. We knew it was coming, and we we want Daniel Bryan to be a fixture in the the upper echelon in the singles. Yes. And we, he's very well on his way. The way he's he's been performing, like it's just he's gone to another level recently. And we didn't know he had another level because oh, he yeah, was kind yeah. of at top level to yeah, begin with. He was a top level in RAs to begin with, but he took that and just completely obliterated the ceiling above it. Yeah. So um, my guess is that there's a Randy Orton heel turn in the works. Probably Money in the Bank I'm, will feature Daniel Bryan versus Randy Orton. Really? Because a lot of people were saying Randy Orton, or uh, there a lot of people were saying uh, Daniel Bryan versus Cena at Money in the Bank. I because Money in the Bank has basically turned into Daniel Bryan's pay per view. Yeah, like it's just I don't know things just they don't necessarily go his way, but he seems to be the one of the highlights. I think I think as long as Daniel Bryan stays face, um, yeah, true. I think that that's a much more of a SummerSlam opportunity there. Have is, a face versus face match. When is Money in the Bank? Is that next month? Yeah. Holy crap! Yeah. I am way off now that they took out one of the uh, the, the now that they took out um, a, a pay per view during the no during that, the year. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm saying is you do you do their team up thing here. They disagree with whose fault it is because of, of course they're going to lose to the Shield. Right. They but they disagree on who loses. Um... There's some super falling out that leads to a match at Money in the Bank. Daniel Bryan wins, cementing that he is what did they take a top out? Tier guy. Did they take no way out? They, they yeah, there's no way out. There's no, there's no, there's no, there no, is no, no way out. There is no no way out. <laughs> no 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 no. <laughs> this no, is no, a very no, confusing. No, no, no. <laughs> this is a very confusing conversation. <laughs> so you're telling me there is no way out? There is in fact a way out. <laughs> <laughs> is it over the top of the cage? It's, it's, it's the seldom seen pay per view. A way out. <laughs> <laughs> Colon the door. The inspirational pay per view. There's a way out if you follow me. <laughs> Brought to you by the Wyatt family. <laughs> okay, fine. I was, totally, I was totally going with God's second appearance on WWE television. <laughs> but I came up with something better. Fair enough, I'll take the Wyatt family. I think, okay, because I know we made the joke about our, our fake uh, uh, um, convention, mm-hmm. Class Ring Attire Expo, aka Cracks. Yes. I think I just came up with a new, uh, <laughs> a, uh, a new feature. The uh, the way out. The way out. <laughs> the the motivational uh, the motivational speech of the Wyatt family. The motivational response to no way out. <laughs> there is a way out. It's called the door of the cage. They open it for you. The referees open it for you, so you can just walk out. Apparently, unlimited number of times now. Didn't it used to be just once? I thought so. Yeah, just once, and then they locked it up, and then the only way to go. What? But now, they're like, we'll open it whatever you want. You oh, okay, you're gonna climb. Okay, all right, fine, whatever. <laughs> Oh, you're going to come out now? Oh, no, you're going to climb. Okay, all right. I mean, this would be quicker, but you want to climb anyway. Okay, I get it. I get it. You're part spider monkey. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for that eternal monologue of the WWE referee. <laughs> I'm telling you, Lil Nate has this conversation in his head during every single match. You can see it on his face. You saw how his arms flopped around whenever he ran to hell in the cell. <laughs> I love I have no reason to I, make that connection, but I sure, I no, sure did. I just, I love how every referee seems to misjudge the steepness of that ramp <laughs> every single time. It's like, oh, 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 god! Why is this at an angle? I never knew. They oh, might man. as well just put on roller skates. <laughs> it would be just as effective, if not more. Oh man. So oh, anyway, I think I have a title for our podcast this week: <laughs> Wrestling on Skates. <laughs> Wrestling on Roller Skates. Um, so anyway, Daniel Bryan beats Randy Orton at Money in the Bank, and that gives him a viable, you know, it's time for my title shot against Cena. Yes, because, and that's what you do at SummerSlam because SummerSlam will have that, you know, 
face versus face, blah de blah. Right. Um. So yeah, I, that's why I go shield. Yeah, I mean, I I was gonna go shield regardless because I'm assuming the at least the Randy Orton uh, heel turn will be ha- happening here, or at least Shield will find a way out. Yeah, uh, out of this one. Um, a few extra masks for this one because I am I have gotten to be a big fan of Roman Reigns recently. Yeah, like yeah, he is, he is really starting to collect. He's really, he's really turned around. And, uh, and he was, he was previously like the weak link of the show, like not bad. Don't, ever. don't use that phrase. I got so much hate on my column for for even alluding towards that. Dear Lord, he is, just like, and I wasn't even trying to diss the guy. Yeah, but I just made that comment that he's he's the perceived weakest link. That's what is, that's the wording I said, and people just jumped all over me. Man, he is the teensiest bit less strong of a link. He is the one guy that no one really had all that many expectations of yeah. going in. Now that has changed because we've seen more of him. As we see more of him, we're like, okay, he is worthy of being in a, in a, in a stable with the great Dean Ambrose and, and Seth, Seth Rollins. Rollins. Right, right, right. So, yeah. Um, so, Shield, Roman Reigns, yes. you're, you're my guy of the week. So There you go. Hooray. I'm pretty sure... He is very, very enthused to know that <laughs> that you're. <laughs> Can't you see like Roman Reigns listening on a tiny, tiny iPod? Like, mm, Hodor. <laughs> <laughs> he just turned Roman Reigns into Hodor. <laughs> he's a he's a he's a. I'm pretty sure he's a very intelligent guy. <laughs> Who can say things, more things than Hodor? <laughs> Roman. <laughs> Roman. <laughs> no, Roman Reigns is actually really good on Mike. If we get a storyline where he has to carry around Hornswoggle, <laughs> or, or push Hornswoggle around in a wheelbarrow... Yeah, that'd be my bad. <laughs> I'll take the blame and for like, that. like, Joel, you turned Roman Reigns into Hodor. <laughs> if you don't watch Game of Thrones, screw you, it's a good show. Uh, <laughs> uh, what's next? Dean and Kane? Uh, yeah, it's uh, the United States Championship, Dean Ambrose uh, versus Kane. This is my dark horse for match of the night. Yeah. We haven't really... Like, we got to see Kane versus Dean Ambrose for a little bit on Raw. Um, so, we got to see a little bit of what they can do together. But I have a feeling that they have a little bit more to show. Yeah. I'm okay I'm okay to be watching this. Now, of course, match of the night, you know, they do have to compete with Dana Bryan in any match. Because lately, he's been turning every match he's into into... And they have to get Dana Bryan match. in a match, and yeah. they have to compete with a return of CM Punk. So, like, mm. a solid dark horse, you know, right, for right. match of the night. But. It has a chance. Of, like, we know what the obvious picks would be. Right. Um. I'm yeah. I'm assuming Dean Ambrose would find a way to get out. Dean Ambrose, easy. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it should be pretty awesome. Right. All right. Uh, World Heavyweight Championship. We have Dolph Ziggler versus Alberto Del Rio. Um. Not much. There's not really all that much story to it because Ziggler has been out with the concussion, and we've just been seeing uh, Del Rio versus Biggie, which I was fine with because Biggie's really, you know, he's pulling his weight on these. He's won my heart. He has. <laughs> yeah. I'm his secret admirer. <laughs> Remember that shirt he wore? Maybe. Yeah, it was very. Okay, first off, you just said you're his secret admirer on a podcast. That's, you know, going to be going out on the internet where everyone can hear. That's not very secret. Sorry. <laughs> You're his very well-known admirer. You admire him as well. I, I the do. The world admires that man. I do. The world should admire that man. He's a, he's a great fan. Pull off that kind of shirt and brown pants. I don't know why I'm talking <laughs> like this. What is that noise out of your face? <laughs> he's wearing brown pants. <laughs> It's like it's like you're trying to imitate the Beatles, but having never heard the Beatles and only heard somebody describe to you how the Beatles sounds like without resorting to an impression. He's wearing brown pants. I don't know what the Beatles are. So, um, yeah, uh, Ziggler's gonna win. This, yeah, this is kind of a like they formality of this. Point. Yeah, he's like he technically has the number one contendership. So, it's gotta happen. Yeah. Um, I don't know, should we give CM Punk top billing, or should yes, we... Yes, no. Okay. <laughs> so, we should, we should talk about John Cena. Yeah, let's, okay. let's, yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, that just... 
That was funny. Um, we have the three stages of Hell match, which is John Cena versus Ryback for the WWE Championship. Essentially, it's two out of three falls. The three matches is we have the Lumberjack match, the Tables match, and if we need it, and we probably will, we'll obviously need it. we will do the Ambulance match. Um, I foresee this, and I call this the moment they announced it. Lumberjack match is going to go to Cena. Tables match as a kind of a fluke thing. We'll go to Ryback, and then ambulance match, Cena wins. I mean, I, I assume that Ryback's going to crush the tables match. He's going to put them through, like, nine tables. Literally. Uh, yeah. No, I'm just going to say, like, ba- and then basically we're going to have a Super Cena resurrection for the ambulance match. Fair enough. I think I think Cena's going to be half dead after the tables match. So, I don't think it'll be a fluke at all. I think it'll be yeah. super crushy Ryback man time. Um, I'm really interested... For the awkward moment where all the lumberjacks have to like parade back up the ramp, <laughs> because they never, their sh- part they never show that on camera. They should though. Yeah, they really should show that. On That'd be the mo- that's the most interesting part of this match to me. Um, Absolutely. So yeah, they pretty much uh, Cena beyond shadow of doubt. Uh, pretty much. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go Cena, and here's here's the real question. Yeah. Um, what is your prediction of the worst of the three stages of hell is going to be the most painful to watch? Oh, ambulance. Ambulance? Yeah. yeah ambulance. Well, I mean, lumberjacks are pretty painful on their own, but... I do hate lumberjack matches. They are pretty... Because they're so, like, heels on this side, heels on that side, then got faces on the other side, then faces on the other side. Like, And the heel always falls out on the face side. And, and the face always falls out on the heel side. Or and when, or when the other happens, everyone lets it go. Yeah. Like, oh, we're not going to touch you. We're just, even though our job is to put you back in the ring. Nope, we're just, we're going to let you catch a breather. Like, that's so dumb. What are the odds? I know, right? What are the odds? Whatever. I always love it when they try to do a Divas Lumberjack match because there's so few of them. A Lumberjill match? <laughs> or a Lumberjill match, yeah. It's basically just Alicia Fox on the outside. <laughs> Alicia- I got him! <laughs> Whoever is not in a, an actual Divas Storyline, so basically Alicia Fox and Natalia. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Natalia. Poor Natalia. Uh, she can't even Poor she can't even have a good night po, on her birthday. Poe Natalia. Po Po Natalia. So I'm saying Cena win. Cena wins. Okay. Moving on, uh, we have the Chris Jericho versus the presumed returning CM Punk. Yes. Question is, will CM Punk actually return for this? Right. It, when he does, this is Chicago, he has been gone for a little while, the crowd is going to cheer, especially now that he's such a, he's been going crazy for the Chicago Blackhawks. Now, I too have been going crazy for the same team, so I'm not knocking it, but he's going to come out, like, he might as well come out with a Blackhawks jersey on. Yeah. Like, he'll come out with a Duncan Keith jersey, and everyone just go nuts. Here's... I, I'm gonna I'm gonna hand feed you this WWE. Listen up, okay? Because even though I don't want to, I I will position myself as a baby bird. All right, I because I want CM Punk. I've, I've said I'm I'm really hardcore. CM Punk needs to be a face right now. <laughs> yes, but I'm going to hand feed you the way to make CM Punk a heel. Okay, I have an I I, I don't want to step your toes, but I do you, have an idea. Just okay. You you have this match set up the way you have. You're doing fine. Whatever. Um... And you have, what's his name, you have Jericho come out first. Yes. Jericho comes out, he gets the Jericho cheers, because it's still Jericho. Um, CM Punk's music hits. Crowd goes Chicago crazy. Yes. Uh, CM Punk comes out, and then sits Punk style, a la Pipe Bomb. Yes. Hush falls on the crowd, it's Pipe Bomb time. Yes. No, no. CM Punk says, I beat you last year, I beat you at Mania, I never need to fight you again. And walks away and mm. says, you're facing this guy. Curtis Axel comes out. Or. Or. Bork Bork. Or Bork Bork. Because Curtis Axel is in a match already. I know, that's why. That's what but I'm saying. But it would be more unexpected if Bork Bork would, comes out. Yeah, but see, I think, that, I think I'd still be a little excited for Bork Bork to come out. Well, yeah. I think. I think you will well, not get yeah. any... And, 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 and they're going to they're gonna have Brock Lesnar come out. They're going to want to advertise this yes. like, ahead of time. Yes. So it's probably a long time, but still. I think they're still, you know, they're still trying to get Curtis Axel over as a heel. Mm-hmm. You have him replace CM Punk in Chicago. 
when CM Punk is in the building, when they have shown you that they have CM Punk, yeah. and that he's just not going to wrestle, yeah, they will set Curtis Axel on fire. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> They would shoot him to the moon, heel-wise. I meant literally they would might set him on fire. I mean, somebody might run down and set him on physical fire. Uh, knowing, knowing the great people of Chicago, absolutely. Absolutely. So... Dear Lord, we're, we're getting, like, we're not even halfway through the season, and they're already booing the Cubs. So, yeah. Basically, if you want... Yeah, if so you, you want, think, you do think it's very likely that CM Punk will be there. Because there is that part of it where he just won't show up. He just up. won't show up? I mean... Granted, he is in Chicago. He's yeah. been to all the Blackhawks games, and I actually have the schedule up. And they could not have timed this perfectly, because they have a game in the, the Stanley Cup Finals against the Boston Bruins literally the day before. Yeah. I, I think they, they, they're they wrestling in a different building, but... I mean, I, I, I do think he, he will be there, because even if the twist is he's not wrestling... To to have him there and not wrestle gets the heel booze. Right. Um, I think that is that's just that's something that. Yeah. WWE still wants against my better judgment. Part of me was convinced that CM Punk, like he himself, was undecided on whether or not he would show up, depending on how the Blackhawks do <laughs> in the playoffs. And they just happen to make it to the finals. Sounds like okay. Well, he's definitely not going to return. He's going to wait until the Blackhawks either win or lose. Yeah. So. We made it to the final, so extended vacation. It it feels like some, it feels like there's more to this than CM Punk's gonna pop up in. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think to be honest with you, I do think that this is going to lead to a SummerSlam match against Jericho. Yeah. I, I I've got that I had that vibe since Jericho first issued the challenge, out. yeah. Um Yeah, that would mean CM Punk's still a heel though. True. Which I do True. I didn't mean. Um, although, honestly, if he, I would be okay if he was a heel against Jericho until Jericho left, if that meant that he was a face after that. Yeah, because Jericho has been a face the entire time that he's been back. But I mean, no, I mean, mean, yeah, that, I don't think, I think that facing Jericho will help keep Punk a heel because Jericho get, can get the cheers. Right. Over Punk, or on par with Punk. I don't think there are many people that can naturally get the cheers on par with Punk, so that the next person he faces will naturally not be able to get booze for Punk mm-hmm. because of the cheers that they're getting themselves. Um, that being said, I guess I'm gonna say I put this one in for Jericho, just because he's the only one I'm confident is gonna be in the ring on Sunday. <laughs> I'll go with that, sure. Uh-huh. Um... But if they actually do wrestle, there's no way in the world they're going to have Punk lose. Yeah. Heel or not. Heel face, it doesn't matter. They're not going to have him lose. <laughs> That's because Jericho doesn't know how to win anymore. <laughs> he goes back and forth. I mean, he was on amazing matches, and he's still one of the best guys in the company. Even though he has a really weird-looking pec muscles now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with those intentions. He's only been fist-pumping with one fist. The other one holds a mic. <laughs> nah, fair enough. <laughs> v- Vazi has done this to him. <laughs> yeah, he, they need to free up his hands. Yep. Give him one of those headsets. Yep, there you go. Yeah. A Backstreet Boy headset. You are my fire. <laughs> That's the only Backstreet lyric that I know. It's the only lyric? You don't even know, like, what it rhymes with? The One Desire, is that it? Is it? I bet maybe. It's either The One Desire or My One Desire. I think it's My One Desire. Ain't nothing but a something. Like, yeah. <laughs> I know that part. <laughs> Well done. You're an, you're an insane kid, aren't you? Back streets, but no, yeah, I was I was totally insane. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so you're telling me there is no way out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> so uh, something unex you did something unexpected this week. Well, I I was planning on doing besides, it. Besides, you know. Being in a relationship. (laughs) (laughs) You want to bring personal business into this? It was a joke, but okay. (laughs) You're talking about Tina. Tina? Tina. (laughs) I was about to say. (laughs) I've seen the girl on Facebook and I know her name is not Tina. (laughs) I know. I just wanted to... If you're listening to this, he's already... He already has another woman. Her her name is Tina. (laughs) 
<laughs> she really wants things to be back in the um, 90s. Um, I was going to say, if she wants me to stop seeing Tina, that'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> A sacrifice I can make. <laughs> Alright, so, I did, I watched, I didn't even watch all of it, I watched part of it. <laughs> I watched one segment. The yeah. Rampage? Yeah, only Rampage. That's the only thing I've seen. <laughs> Rampage did not set that crowd on and fire. And I didn't, I, you know, I was with you, Kurt Angle's music came out, or Kurt Angle's music hit, he came out, and I kind of just skimmed through that, and then I, at one, some point I just cut it off. Yeah. I didn't even watch the whole thing, so. Um. He's not, it's like, he was trying to be Tough and bad, but still be a good guy? I mean, you know, it's... Like, I always love wrestling. It's his first time out, so... Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm... So I'm, I can't... I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not expecting a lot of slack. Like, he came out, like, with the whole, like, snarling look, and then he gave kids high five. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, so I was like, he's a... Oh, he's not. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, and this actually got a... Probably a really difficult position where he's... He's coming in high profile right away. Yeah. You know, um, not really, there's there's really nowhere for him to test. You know, he, he has no developmental opportunities right. for this kind of thing. Um, you know, that being said, he, he has been, you know, in movies. He has been, he was well known for his personality, you know, even right. at MMA. Um so I hope he gets because I, I I I do remember he was a guest host for Raw one to advertise for the A team yeah for because the A team came out during the guest host every week except for Liam Neeson um, <laughs> minor minor note but <laughs> Liam Neeson was not there and I was mad um, but yeah he was I remember he I actually was okay with him because usually I hated all the guest hosts but he was pretty good but you didn't think Jewel was qualified to to successfully run an episode of Raw. Jewel? Wasn't Jewel one of them? The singer? I don't remember that. <laughs> Why would they do that? Maybe I blocked it out of my head for a reason. I've been watching all the fringe, so maybe I, I picked up something from that. Mostly I remember Shatner. Oh Lord, how could you not? Shatner was the Shatner was the best, man. Bob Barker was pretty good. Bob Barker was pretty good. Muppets just because they're the Muppets. M- but Muppets weren't on the weekly. They didn't host during the weekly time. They they hosted a special. Episode. No no no. They they hosted a raw. When did they? I mean they right. hosted a raw, but they did not host when there was a guest host every week. Like Hugh Jackman didn't host when there was a guest host every week. He just came out and hosted one week. The Muppets just came out and hosted one week. I'm pretty sure. No, because the Muppets hosted for advertisement for their movie, which came out like a year after that stopped. I don't know. I don't. I don't think I believe you because I know that they they basically. They did host every week, and they started running out of hosts. Yeah, and then they're like, "Okay, well, we'll just have hosts whenever we can, whenever we can book them." Basically, but but it went, it went host, then I think Bret Hart, and then Anonymous GM, and Muppets were after that because Seamus was a face because of the, of the whole Beaker connection, and Seamus was not a face until right that time. So the Muppets were just a half one off host. That was a good episode. It was a good episode. It was a Halloween episode, too. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Good times. Live Muppets. But was Jewel weird. was a host? I, I I won't swear that Jewel was a host, but I think Jewel was a host at one point. Hmm. Okay. I mean... I mean, Seth, uh, uh, Seth Green was a good host. Seth, Seth Green was a great host. Yeah. Any host that was willing to actually get in the ring and do something... Yeah. Like my, and we know it was going to be great, but... You know. Well... Hugh Jack... Or, yeah. Uh, Hugh, Hugh Jackman, Jackman coming in and throwing a punch. That was yeah. pretty cool. Uh, I mean, and there are... And Shaq actually throwing, like, a shoulder block or something. Yeah. It didn't go over very well, <laughs> but it led to us, like, maybe Shaq would actually do a match. And we had that whole rumor between him and Big Show uh, for 28, but it never went through. No. And then we ended up getting Big Show and Cody Rhodes. And we're still bitter about and that. ruined Cody Rhodes. He has not recovered from that at no. all. No. He was on his way up, but now... We... And he could have been, because he could have he could have been gone over gold dust so well. Oh my god, that would god, have been so... That match would have made him. <sighs> That's why I secretly wanted Caitlyn's uh, uh, secret admirer. Yeah, I secretly wanted her secret admirer <laughs> to be Goldust. Because then Cody can be come out and be like, but I liked her. And he's like, you got a Bella. 
They could fight for anything. I don't care. I just want them. I just want oh, them yeah, to come to blows. I, yeah, I don't. I don't care what they're fighting over. I just want it to happen. So, but anyway, um, yeah. What I, what I need to what, what I need to do what what I need for for Goldust to do. I need him to go on a podcast somewhere, probably Col- Cabanas, mm-hmm. and talk about the whole thing between him getting fired from SmackDown or in fired from the company in general. Coming back for for Royal Rumble, and then everything that happened after that, and why certain things didn't happen. Why none of this? I want an actual resulted. reason. Yeah, yeah. And I know he won't badmouth anyone because he's still in on good terms with everyone. Hence, why he came back for Royal Rumble. Right. But I want answers <laughs> because nay, you demand answers. I demand answers because this could have been something fantastic, and it could have skyrocketed Cody to the moon. Yeah. But it didn't, and now Cody is still in the muck. Yep. Not really going anywhere, and not really showing us anything. It's like he's giving up, giving up himself. Mm-hmm. I don't know. He's not. He hasn't given up as badly as Zack Ryder has, <laughs> because Zack Ryder has obviously given up completely. But, I don't know. Cody's getting there. He's starting to seem a little bit defeated. Yeah. I don't know, man. Anyway, the point is, I'll, I'll, Sutine. I'll, watch, I'll watch again this week. I'll see what Mr. Rampage has gone So, for. essentially, you're you're watching TNA, reporting back to us, and telling us if it's worth it. Well, it's not. <laughs> it's, yeah. You know, and, um, I mean, TNA's actually doing some interesting stuff right now. I've seen, uh, okay, I've seen GIFs. And yes, it's GIFs, not GIFs, just making a statement. <laughs> um, I've, I've seen GIFs of, of uh, Bully Ray getting hit with stuff. And obviously setting up for the next move. Like, it's painful. Like, we, we always had the the one where he got hit. And it's like, oh, and I'm going to walk over to the table and lie down on the table. And then there was one, it was him versus Jeff Hardy. I'm assuming it was at the at Slam anniversary. Where he just kind of, like, he gets hit and he just, you know, just hops over a, a, a ladder and just kind of gently sets himself down in the corner. Yeah. And, like, moves, and literally moves the ladder out of the way to, to fall down. Like, it was on Reddit for a, for a while, and it's just, like, I would be infuriated if I saw that on You don't on like w. Bully Ray? I love Bully Ray. I love the character. And he obviously still has ring ability. I've always loved his ring stuff. Mm-hmm. But the fact that he can get away with stuff like that yeah, says a lot more about the product, I think. That's a good point. You know? If someone was back there willing to, you know, light a fire underneath him. He wouldn't do that stuff. Well, I think... So I don't know who to blame on that one, to be honest with you. I I want to believe it's not his fault. Yeah. Or no one's inspiring to do better. I I feel like right now, they have a little bit of... With Rampage, um, with the the Slammiversary Fallout, um, some interesting stuff with Stink. Um, They have a little bit of of momentum. TNA's had momentum before and squandered it. So, you know... I'm not saying like this is the first time because I was about to say, um, oh god, you're gonna kill me, or our listeners are gonna kill me for not knowing his name, but he was champion for a very long time recently. He was part of a Aziz? tag team. No, he was taught, he was part of a tag team. Let's see. Uh, he was part of a uh, beer money. Crap. <laughs> they cut his hair after the game of champion turned heel. It was the storyline that you kept telling me was, it was a so great good too. Oh jeez. It's not uh. They had a great match, too. What is his name? I, it's completely blanking. He's he's the longest reigning TNA champion. Yeah. Like, I could just spout off that. I cannot yeah. think of his name. I can think of Austin Aries. I know that. Yeah. And I do, did remember him uh, um, <laughs> completely <laughs> doing inappropriate things to the announcer, announcer lady who got his their name wrong. Yeah, we got in trouble for that. <laughs> yeah, he did. But you you know who we're talking about. I I'm sorry. I forgot the DNA champion's name. Is it James something? No. Mm. Whatever. I I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> they did have a good match though. It, I, I I'm picturing his face right now. Yeah. No. I I can picture his face. I can picture. His I know this buddy's is face. this is con- this is very compelling. Podcast. I know, right? That's why I was like, we're that's... just gonna have to cut all this part out. That's why I'm like, we gotta move on because yes, yes, yes. It's just a lot of us going like, um, get a Bobby Rude. Bobby Rude. <laughs> <Duh. laughs> 
That's one thing I hate about the the, the like, announcer chick. She like she's he's always Bobby Rue. Yeah. I don't even watch TNA, and I came up with that first. You should watch TNA. I really shouldn't. <laughs> no, it's alright. <laughs> I really shouldn't. Um, why did I bring him up now? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um. Yeah, like okay, yeah. He had the mo- the we TNA had momentum when he we when we had that big tournament that you were talking about. We had the story. Oh, the between, Bound for Glory series. Yes, and then he had that. Storyline between him and his old tag team partner. Yeah. Which, you you know, you've gone... And that's a lot of momentum. And then he becomes champion, and he carries that momentum as champion. And they... From what I understand, they kind of squandered that. Um... Okay, they... they and it was... I think it was after his... I mean, it was... I don't even remember what it was at, but they... Those two had a great, great match... Like a match... Genuine match of the year. Yeah. Contender. It's definitely TNA's match of the year, but like a... Genuine... When I was just like picking matches of the year, like that one... Right. That was a possibility. Um, yeah, it's just... they A big, big, big part of wrestling and being a wrestling fan is watching potential get squandered. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like, it happens all the time when we can point to a thousand occasions from everywhere where it's like, oh, if this and this happened, this would have changed everything. And it would have, but, you know, it didn't, and blah de blah Um... It's just that TNA has a lot less. So when they squander something, it's a lot worse for them. Hmm. There's not there's not a lot of opportunities for TNA. Um, and, T, you know, I get some stuff. I get that it's safe to fall back on Sting. And honestly... They love the, the safety nets. Honestly, like... As as much as like I whine and complain about you know Hogan clearing a ring because I can't I can't in my you know deepest kayfab cannot get you know believe that Hogan can clear a ring anymore. I still can with Sting like Sting yeah can move yeah. is good you know yeah it's like you know sitting here smiling I'm like no nah, you know I I can sit here and be like no those guys could easily take Sting. But the way that, you know, Sting's portrayed, the way he acts, the way he looks, it helps that he has makeup caked on his face. You know? He doesn't look... He looks a little older when he's not wearing that makeup. But I can buy Sting being a legitimate in-ring threat still. Right. Um, it's... It's a thing where... But at the same time, you guys have Samoa Joe. Yeah. You guys have AJ Styles. Yeah, it's like, yeah, 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 you guys can complain, but you, you got those guys. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. The, it's, and Austin Aries, like, I I would kill to see those guys in, in WWE. Yeah. Like, I think they could do amazing, amazing things. And, and I don't know, I, I don't really know Austin Aries' history a while back, but I do know that, you know, the other guys, they had chances with WWE, and then WWE either didn't see anything, or they just were like, nah, whatever, and passed on them. Yeah. And that's why, like, you, you know, when you have Rampage, you know, is sticking him against um, Kurt Angle the best idea? Because you will have people tune in because of Rampage. You'll have people who oh, have yeah. not oh, touched yeah. the product. And the, only, no the only reason we're even talking about TNA right now is because they signed Rampage. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so you stick him up against... You know, AJ Styles. Yeah. Um, even if he doesn't look good, you get AJ Styles bouncing around him. You get a few AJ Styles fans. Yeah. Um, and it just, I feel like, I don't know, I'm bitter again. <laughs> this podcast is bumming me out. Maybe it should be going another... <laughs> Like two week vacation <laughs> for you to mellow out, send you to a, a nice. I don't know. Apparently, it doesn't work. <laughs> apparently, it doesn't work because everything gets. I get frustrated. Well, of with course, it, of course, the break didn't work. You were working the entire time. I was working the entire See? time. So, yeah. um, there is a way out, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> it's the door. It's the door. You just need to find your inner ref. And pull that door open. Come on, I'm opening the door for you, buddy. <laughs> several, don't, several you times. Don't, you don't have to climb. You don't. Oh, you're climbing again. Okay, I'm gonna close this. I'll, I'll be right here, though. I'll be right here. I'm here for you to open the door. Oh, uh, do you have anything else? 
Oh. Uh, mail sack is empty. <laughs> Phrasing? Did you hug a viper too much? <laughs> <laughs> on that note you can follow us on Twitter every Monday at CR Attire you get fantastic in your windows uh, and sometimes got, wrestling it's how we keep a, we keep that explicit tag off <laughs> pretty much alright uh, and if you have any questions comments anything you want us what am I doing I got lost. <laughs> the website, the, the email. That's right. Okay, let's let's start over with the <laughs> plugs and action. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter every Monday night, inappropriate Sundays at CR Attire. Uh, plenty of wrestling chit chat going on there. We will have the uh, CRA nights for uh, payback for yes. payback because we're well, as as you all belated. We're uh, always working. And if you have any questions, comments, anything you want us to bring up on the show, add to our to Chris's mail sack. Fill that mail sack back up. Fill it up, and we'll keep it away from all those vipers. <laughs> Send that to classyringattire at gmail dot com. Can't get that far away. <laughs> What are you talking about? You said you're going to keep it away from the Vipers. <laughs> but it can only get so far away from the Vipers. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I don't know if this is funny to you guys, but I'm crying over here. <laughs> the thing is, if John Cena made these jokes, I would boo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would, too. Oh, did you even say what the email address? Yes, I said you can email us at classyringattire at gmail.com and then you laugh. <laughs> we are also on iTunes. Please subscribe to us on iTunes. Give us a review. Give us a rating of... Five stars! And you will get a new episode directly downloaded to you every single time. And if you're listening to this uh, on wrestling.insidepulse.com, leave us a comment on there. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, I'm going to go into more detail on my thoughts this week about the card uh, for my rager. Um, you probably have no idea what you're going to write. Okay. <laughs> Mulling it over. Uh, also, one quick more quick plug. We are on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, we I posted the slideshow on there. Um, I think it's YouTube.com slash Classroom Ring Attire. Uh, check out the slide. It's it's about 20 minutes long. Yeah. Um, we're, we're wanting to do a little bit more stuff on YouTube. It's, so, more things to come. Yeah. It's it's basically a teaser, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, until next time, stay classy and huzzah. Huzzah. Huzzah.